counterintuitively, what that means is we need to pick the defeats that win. And what does that mean? Well, for example, think again about the copyright term. There's been a battle for the last 10 years about whether copyright terms should be extended again over this period. Um, and this time, this battle is being waged in the context of extended over something like recordings. Now, of course, over the past 20 years, what we should see is we've seen a radical increase in the copyright term. Copyright terms were originally triggered into rising when Germany increased their term by 20 years, leading the EU to increase its term by 20 years, leading the US to say that it needed to, quote, harmonize with the EU, so it increased its term by 20 years, and then a little bit more than 20 years for some types of copyrighted work. That then led the EU to say we need to harmonize on America by increasing our term for at least recordings once again by 20 years. Okay, so constant cycle of increasing the term for existing works as well as for future works. Now, throughout this time, the insight of Friedman that this is a no-brainer that this could possibly advance the public good has existed. That the idea that no extension of existing works has been a no-brainer has been obvious in all sorts of debates about this. Indeed, Britain has been pretty good at pushing this point strongly. Two governments have commissioned two different reports, one the Labour government, one the Conservative government, both of which conclude that it could not make sense to extend the term of existing copyrights. Yet, Surprise, surprise, the EU has extended the term of existing copyrights just last September uh, by 20 years, once again, because rock veterans always win copyright fights. Now that's the point. We need to recognize they will always win. And that leads us to a kind of strategic choice. What should we aim for? Should we aim for all that we want or most of what we want? Should we say <coughs> no? Just like Nancy Reagan tried to run the Just Say No campaign, should we say no to copyright term extensions? Or should we say something like, okay, if you pay for it. To secure the extension, you want 20 more years of copyright retention? Okay, you can get that, but you must buy it. You have to uh, buy it by paying a certain fixed amount, and then we can use that money to fund the arts more generally inside of the country that is permitting the extension. In this sense, to reintroduce some form of formalities, not at the creation of a copyrighted work, but for the ability to extend the term of a copyrighted work. Um, because yes, but rules will certainly facilitate a significant amount of copyrighted work not having its term extended and instead passing into the public domain whether that's 50% or 80%, or as the United States experience demonstrated, 95% of works would pass into the public domain rather than having their terms extended. 95% in the public domain. We can't tell what the per percentage is, but what we can say is that it would be much, much more than it is now. <laughs> now, I recognize that to come to France and speak of formalities is a little bit of a heresy. I get that. <laughs> but I'm pleading with you, you need to get over this. <laughs> we need to get over this idea that any kind of regulation in this context would be heresy to the idea of IP, because what IP has now produced is the least efficient property system known to man. We can't even identify who owns what to facilitate this market in goods to be trans traded in a way that benefits those who are supposed to benefit from these copyright protections. And groups as diverse as the RAAA and Microsoft have both endorsed proposals that would essentially reintroduce limited formalities to make this system work more better because both of them recognize it makes sense of a public purpose as well as their private purpose. Copyright here serves this public purpose as well as the private purpose. And it is a mistake, I think strategic mistake, for us not to recognize the ways in which these battles can be fought accepting the inevitable victory of the most powerful players, but building in a balance that could facilitate the kind of balance the IP regime needs. This is what SMART would be, and we need to make sure we don't make such mistakes anymore in the future. And then finally, here's lesson three. 